Today on Folks, a special holiday program featuring youngsters from the Louisiana School for the Deaf in Baton Rouge. And Sonia Massengale has a fascinating fashion story entitled, Oh, You Big Beautiful Doll. Hello everyone, I'm Rob Hinton. A lot of Christmas spirit today on Folks. Everybody says folks. Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Folks. Today we have several groups from the Louisiana School for the Deaf who will be sign singing Christmas songs for us. To get things started, we have the Prep Sign Singers, a group of seven and eight year olds, who will be singing for us Frosty the Snowman. The next song features the Elementary Christmas Choir and they have chosen as their selection, Go Tell It on the Mountain. kept their watching or silent clocks by night behold throughout the heavens there shone a holy light go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Oh, my God. 
Once upon a time, any woman who wore a dress size larger than a 16 was in real trouble if she couldn't sew. Black polyester and tent dresses were the order of the day for a large woman's wardrobe. But there's been a not-so-quiet revolution taking place in the fashion industry today, and now a full-figured woman is free to be a great, big, beautiful doll. 98% of the people who lose a significant amount of weight gain it all back, usually within a year. A few brave people discovered that nearly a third of the American female population wore a size 14 or larger, and these women led full, active lives for which they could not find pretty clothes to wear. But things have changed. Meet Judith Ann Egan, New York fashion designer who has recently launched a highly successful line of clothing for the full-figured woman. I've been a large size off and on several times in my life. I actually got into the dress business because at one point I was about 200 pounds and I could not find young, fun clothes for myself. And I was in the crafts business and I was working in third world countries and I started making my own clothes because the clothing wasn't right for me. Then there was a tremendous acceptance all of a sudden in the market that the customer and the person was a human being. It seemed to all come together very quickly. Um, it was always a chicken and egg story. You know, they don't want nice clothing. Polyesters are good enough for them. They wouldn't pay for expensive clothing. Nobody would acknowledge a woman could be heavy, she could be sensual, she had weddings to go to, she got married, her daughter got married, she was beautiful. You know, a few Elizabeth Taylors, but nobody wanted to acknowledge the heavier person as a real person with all the same living standards that the thin person had. It's tremendous prejudice. I mean, I, I see it in our showroom. With, and all of a sudden, a few people started making stores, and they started selling the clothing, and people started getting dressed up. Um, the 60s faded away when you had to have a certain classic look, and there's more allowance for a broader spectrum. And it was a time to say, let's cater and give these women some beauty. I mean, because they're beautiful women, many of them, and they can just come out. Madeline Sparks, a former Ford model, works for Judith Ann, developing and promoting her Judith Ann Plus line. A charming, dynamic saleswoman, Madeline enjoyed a successful career as a model because of her full figure. I never wanted to be a model. I never grew up thinking I was going to be a model or could be a model. When I moved to New York, I moved to New York to pursue um, a theater career in directing and producing, stage managing, as well as acting. I mean, that was my background. And when I um, moved there, someone came up to me and asked me if I wanted to be a model. And at first I thought they were going to say, well, you've got to lose 50 pounds and all this other stuff. And they said, no, just like you are. So I did it for the money initially. Um, at the time, it was in 1978, they paid $75 an hour. It's gone up quite a bit since then. And uh, I just needed the extra money to live in New York City to take my acting classes. And before I knew it, I was um, a full-time model and uh, working at it all the time and had really put my theater career on a back burner because I got very involved in pursuing developing the full-figured market, especially. So I never really wanted to be a model, but that's how I got into it. Tara Messenger is founder of Women at Large, a support group for large-size women. The mother of two, Tara divides her time between family, business, and pursuit of her master's degree in social work. I started it as the result of a research project that I did in the Graduate School of Social Work. I was interested in the problem being a large-size woman myself, and I did a lot of reading and research about it, and I thought it would be a nice way to help other women think better about themselves and, and gain more self-esteem and confidence and be the best they could be, no matter what size they were. With the beginning of a new consciousness, large women have found that there is a new delight to shopping where you are really wanted and not merely tolerated. The philosophy of our store is to bring the best fashion we can for the larger woman to make her look and feel good and feel good about herself and what she wears. That's, that's the whole idea about it. If she looks good, she's going to feel good about herself. And that's, that's the whole deal, you know. That's, that's what makes you, you know, 
a large person that looks good and a large person that is dowdy looking and it's not, you know, afraid to come out of her house or come out of her shell. When you get them in that dressing room and you try something on them and it looks so good, they say, hey, you know, I can get out in the world and I can be somebody. And that's what's so good about the whole thing. I respect larger women and I think that they look great and I'm one of them. I think that it's all what you can do for yourself as far as attitude. Attitude's very important. Um, you should always look your best. You should exercise. You should uh, always just look the best that you can be. And I think if you look good, you're going to feel good and your attitude will show it and your, your outer self will shine. Success is built on self-esteem. The woman who overcomes society's stereotypes to attain success must first feel good about herself. Although I prefer being thin to being heavy, whether I'm 150 or 200 pounds, I have never not worn my makeup. I have never not gotten my hair done. I have never not put on beautiful clothing if I could. And I've always felt beautiful. I mean, I might have had a, an Elizabeth Taylor kind of put more makeup on kind of look, but I always felt wonderful. And I wear a bikini at 200 pounds and at 150. <laughs> I think as large size women are learning to accept themselves for what they are and stop on the diet merry-go-round and stop feeling bad about being their weight, but accepting themselves and saying, I'm going to be the best I can be today and the best I can be tomorrow. And if I'm five pounds less or 10 pounds less or 50 pounds less a year from now, that's a year from now. Right now, I'm going to be the best I can be. So I'm going to go to this wedding or I'm going to go on this business trip or I'm going to go to this party and I'm going to look fabulous and I'm going to be myself. And I think as we learn to do that with ourselves and make the best of ourselves, that other people will accept us and the prejudices are breaking down. Um, you know, the fact that we have a lot of large size models in this country now, is, which is something that never existed. When I first started, I was one of the first ones. And we really experienced a lot of negativism toward our being models. Um, there are big careers out there now with girls in large sizes. You know, it really has changed. And as we are in the magazines, and um, the more that comes out about health, and the more preoccupied our country is, I think, with being too thin, I think we have the backlash of saying, you know, being mentally healthy and emotionally healthy is just as important. Um, and I think that's just going to get better and better. Society dictates a lot of uh, fashion trends and ideals. And I'm not exactly what most of uh, the population would say is the perfect size woman. But then on the other hand, I don't have to live my life in accord with these dictates. And I think that I have to live my own life, and I have to make the best of it. And if that means that I'm going to be a size 16 plus, then I have to, I'm the one that has to deal with that. And I just have to make the best of it and accept myself as just like I am, and for who I am and what I am, and be the best person that I can. React to this for me. You have such a pretty face. Why don't you lose some weight? Oh, yeah. I've heard that um, several times. And I really, you know, it's, it's strange because I could say, you have such a beautiful face. Why don't you gain a little, few pounds, you know, or something? But um, I've, I've had that asked a lot. And, and I just think to myself um, that that's a person who solely looks at the outer shell and does not take the time to see the whole person, you know, and, uh, and, and what their personality is about. And so I think that that's a very insensitive person who says, makes that kind of a statement. I wish I had a dollar for every time somebody told me that. Um, I say thank you. And usually what follows that is, so why don't you do something about that body? <laughs> why don't you lose weight? Um, I just say thank you, and it, depending on the context of the statement, it sometimes it's like they're saying, oh, I pity you, you know, and I, I almost feel like saying, how dare you presume that I want to be thin? Too bad. I feel good about myself the way I am now. Everybody wishes they could be a size 8, but I'm not a size 8, and I know when I put on clothes, I'm going to look good as a size 8 looks. 
and that's what makes all the difference in the world. The question arises, how do men respond to larger women? The consensus seems to be that self-esteem, again, is the most important factor. I think that a lot of men that I have known have changed their attitudes about large size women from having known me because I have a high level of self-esteem. Uh, I think the men that I meet, um, they see me and they see me for, for me. And that's what I like and that's the kind of man I'm attracted to. Um, if uh, he has a different feeling about me because of my size, well I would not entertain him at all. I guess basically my husband is accepting of me and he, he enjoys my confidence and my personality, but I think he really would like to see me lose some weight. It, it, he hasn't accepted it as well as I have, but um, we're working on that. I think he realizes that it's something that he has to deal with just like I have dealt with it. The future looks great for you big, beautiful women out there. Progress is being made towards understanding each of you as valuable individuals. This does not mean that dieting or proper exercise is not important. Quite the contrary, diet and physical conditioning are important. But beauty comes in all shapes, sizes, and colors, and you don't have to wait to be beautiful. Feel good about yourself. Feel good about yourself to try on different things no matter I can pull something off a rack and a lot of women say, I can't wear that. And then I finally force them into the dressing room. They put it on and they just cannot believe what they look like. They love it. You know, don't stick to whatever you've been wearing for the past 20 years because you don't have to anymore. Know what kind of styles that look best on you. Know where your hemline should be, your best colors. You can get your color chart done know what kind of jewelry, how to wear your hair. All of this plays an important part in looking your best at all times. And I think that we should particularly pay attention to the type of shoes we wear. I see so many fuller women wearing the wrong shoes. They wear too high of a heel, they wear too low of a heel. Find out from all the, the books that have been written on proper dressing for fuller women, find out what is best for you. And um, I think it, it's just a wonderful thing to uh, know what you should wear, and then you present yourself in a beautiful way. For those of us in the baby boom, there are more of us, and we're bigger than any other part of the population. Um, and we're bigger in numbers, and we're bigger in our weight, because Americans tend to gain weight, and 99% of us may lose it, but we gain it back. So there's about... 33 million large size women out there who wear over a size 16 who are adults. And that figure isn't going to change. It's going to get larger. And uh, we are a force in our economy. We are a force in our society. And we're out there. And the fact that designers are recognizing that we're there, I think, means that um, the whole future of this as something that maybe one day it won't be newsworthy, you know? Maybe one day talking about full-figured fashions or designs just won't have any other importance than talking about a regular size. And that is a day I look forward to. Okay, time for more Christmas music from the Louisiana School for the Deaf Marching Band.
Okay, our next selection features the Prep Sign Singers again as they sign to Willie Nelson's rendition of White Christmas. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas Just like the ones I used to know Where the treetops glisten and chill That's our program for this week. Thanks for watching. From all of us here on Folks, have a merry and safe Christmas. We leave you with the elementary Christmas choir signing to Silent.